Okay. We have a uh, lot 22. Is it is a lot. So <laughs> I'm, I'm, we're looking on them. Oh. Still not <coughs> Hit refresh. It's okay, I'll read. 2207 Deshaun. Okay. 80,750, 4750 lot. Keith? Uh, my client has, uh, actually has 48 lots over there. She's selling 48. eight lots now Great. in this area. It's Fifth Ward of Houston, basically I 10 heading uh, east. And just after 59, you hit Waco and you would go uh, left, uh, north, uh, south, which is <coughs> east. All right, anyway. Um, She's got the eight lots. They range from forty-seven fifty to uh, eighty-four hundred square feet, or seventeen dollars a foot. There, that area is starting to go, just like Eastwood that uh, Jonathan's working on. This area is starting to move. Letting you know. Thank you. And this is another one. Yes, twenty-one oh five, Bleaker Street. And another one. Keith, are they targeting that to a, a, a builder or end user? You know, this one, or the one that just passed on East Tex would probably be a, a builder because uh, it's right off the freeway. Um, but it's more or less an end user. <clears throat> Is there a reason why she didn't do them combined? Or are these combined? Uh, of the 48, these are eight isolated ones. They're in a general area, but they're not combined. She has some that are combined. We're going to hold on those for a while. doesn't have to get rid of them. She just are people buying individual lots? Or yes. I'm just curious. Yes. To build one. Yeah. Custom. And you and there, there's no deed restrictions, so you could build duplexes. There's duplexes going up, okay. quadruplexes. You could be creative. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this one is 110 five, a little bit bigger, 6,500 square feet. Here's the one on Waco, 7,500 square feet. Can you hit the map real quick? I'm sorry? Hit the map. Yeah, we're doing drone shots on Wednesday. What is the map? Oh, really? Yeah. <coughs> so that's pretty close. Navigation, right? navigation, navigation is on the other side of the navigation channel. channel. Yes, it is. That, if you look at where Clinton Drive is right there in the waterfront, that's where the East Harbor project's going in. So this that, that whole area is getting built out with townhomes. A good time to buy a lot. And then eighty four hundred square feet for one forty two eight. All right, seventy eight oh three Sandpiper, one fifty nine, Thomas Clappy. Town. Nine oh one North Jones Street, um, one seventy five Jonathan Baytown. Yeah, this is from my hometown, Baytown, yeah. Texas. Uh, some <laughs> friends of mine I grew up with have lived in this house for fifteen years and are now moving on. And it's a really cute little house. It was built in the twenties. It's twenty five hundred square foot. It does have some additions. It's got a large yard. I think it was around eighty four hundred square foot. Um, I love that great yeah, big family room adorable. in there. Yeah. Yeah, and, and the wife is a kitchen designer, so she remodeled that kitchen, and she also has plans to, like, take in this other room, and, but I don't guess she's doing that now, but I have the plans. Awesome. Two six eight five two Manor Crest, uh, one hundred and eighty thousand. Rachel Solar, Montgomery, England. Eleven Seven Eleven Memorial and Hudson Oaks, two forty nine Irby. It's a really nice uh, two story townhome in unit, but it has extra windows. 
also sitting on the edge of the car. Fifty-two twenty-three Ariel in Meyerland, two seventy-five Terry Kaminsky. What? Uh, unit a thousand and one in Bristol, two ninety-five Ida Perlman, fourteen fifteen square feet. What's the assessment now? 1117 per month. Thank you. 3418 Klein, 315. Jonathan. Uh, yeah, that, in fact, that was just in that same area as those lots we were just looking at, right there, a couple blocks away from where they're building the East River project. Uh, so you guys don't remember it's 150 plus acre development uh, that Midway is doing right there east of downtown. Uh, this is a nice little town home. It's got a great little backyard. Uh, they are moving on to Fort Worth. This was one of uh, the relocation the department sent me. Yeah, it's nice size. Yeah, good. Because they have big furniture. It's also only two stories, which is great. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's nice. real nice. hard to find that. Yeah. Okay, 102 Quitman, the Point Condos, 319, Elizabeth Gregory. Yeah. And blue floors, it says. One Grand Hollow and Grand Lakes and Katie, three forty eight. Debbie Callan. Five hundred three Loch Lomond in um, the Ireland area, three sixty five Terry Kaminsky. Twenty seven eighteen Jackson, three eighty five Jack Swanson. That's a really great. Uh, town home down in Midtown. It's a uh, super location, really easy to, to uh, downtown uh, the uh, Midtown off Montrose and Muse Museum District. Uh, standard three bedroom, three and a half bath kind of floor plan with the one suite on the first floor. The owners took out all the, uh, the carpets in the bedrooms a couple years ago and put in the hardwood floors throughout. We are replacing the microwave with a traditional stainless steel surround. So basically, it's in great shape, ready to go. It is in what's called City Scene, which is a collection of about 20 townhomes. So you've got controlled access in and out. Really nice uh, master bath with a wet room back there with the shop, you know, double showers and the tub together. And the balcony is right off. <coughs> Uh, master bedroom as well. Fifty-two 
5202 Point Siena, <coughs> 415 in Oak Forest. Keith, how do you say that? Yeah, Point Siena. Point Siena. Uh, this is a three bedroom, two bath. My uh, seller bought it and has completely remodeled it. Uh, all new water lines, new electric lines, uh, opened it up. Uh, really has done an excellent job. New wood flooring and one of what was a study that was carpeted with new wood flooring in there, but matched it very well. Uh, all new appliances. Uh, had an open house Saturday, had great response. Had a few people going back That's from really from cute. today. today. But it's a, he really did a really nice job. New ceiling fans. A great thing about this property is it backs up to Mangum Manor Park. And actually, on his back fence, he has a gate that goes through the park. So it's pretty neat. And it has a green belt on the side. So uh, garage is nice and deep. A lot of the new garages are not deep enough. This is 20 feet deep, so you can easily get an extended cab uh, truck in there, along with 17 feet wide. So plenty of space. Did but it get nice, water park? It did not. Oh, Very cute. How many square feet? It is 2,040. 3603 North Brazewood, 450, Margaret Vincent. <clears throat> Okay, so we are allowed to do those kind of photos, or we're not? Yeah. What kind of photos? Like lifestyle ones. Yeah. So we said we got an email that said, "Watch what you're doing because you're going to get sued." Just copyright. Somewhere it originates. Yeah. 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 Six hundred one West Tenth Street in the Heights, four sixty Marwa Fawcett. How cute that is! Very cute. Yeah. Touching your name on the road. It does. Isn't that cute? You're already sold. You're going to have to sell you. I mean, you're in. Ninety-five oh five Bayou Brook in Woodlake Forest, four sixty-nine. Let's spend some time Brook. I think this will read this one. Yes, that's virtually Sixty-eight, sixty-five Staffordshire and Devonshire Place, five thirty-five. David Atkins. Nineteen eighteen Potomac in West Haven Estates, five seventy, Ruthie Porterfield. <coughs> Twenty nine ten Drew's Manor in Cinco Ranch, five ninety nine, Diane Kiki. Mont Ver Mount Vernon, sorry, in Montrose, 649, Phil Walter.
2418 Mandel, 699 Lisa Marshall. Cheers, guys. San Felipe in the Four Leaf Towers, Unit 314 for 725. Wei Wu. 690 square feet in photos. 9326 Shady Lane, 799 Peggy Pentecost. <coughs> <coughs> Inwood, Briarcroft, 839, Victoria Minton. Eight twenty seven Heathcliff Court, nine ninety nine, join Lamons. <coughs> Just a like them talking about thousand mm -hmm. What's that? <coughs> I just saw on the showing thing it had about like twenty showing oh, right? okay. something like that. So close the price. Yes, of course. Highland Street in uh, the Heights, a million one fifty, Cindy Burns. Seven twenty nine Logan Lane in Bella Vista Gardens, a million one fifty Leanne Salmons. <coughs> Locus and Bel Air, a million one seventy five, Marlene Roden. This is a release. Uh, it has new price and it also has ten thousand dollars go to the selling floor in the buyer for closing costs or for repairs. Okay. <clears throat> Marlene, is the master down or up? I'm sorry? Is the master, master down or up? Oh, yeah, the master is down. Yeah. Master's down. Okay. It's hurricane. Whoa. It's hurricane. 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 It's
Unit 1806 at the Biobin Towers, a million two twenty five, Betty Schindler. Fourteen sixteen Nantucket in West Haven Estates, a million three forty nine nine Beverly Jordan. <laughs> I went and previewed this house, and it really is really pretty. It really is very, and it's beautifully done. <laughs> Mm -hmm. it looks like a three-car garage. Yeah. Yeah. So that's good. Yeah. It's really pretty. It's all been updated. It's a beautiful house. 1110 Milford, a million five ninety-nine to Jennifer Lucio. I went to this this weekend. It is really a great house. It's um, it's the sister of the house that she just <coughs> sold in that same area. And just fabulous taste. It's redone everything. Just in the best taste in it. I mean, it was a packed open house. The house is beautiful and cute. And it's still on the mail. I'm sure it's still like it. Yeah. Right. But they just have the gone. cabinets, all the details. That will be gone. Yeah. The Agnes Martin prints of the sofa. <laughs> How much square footage is that? <coughs> it's about 2,000. It's not very big, but it's the house is just right. precious. Yes, thank you. That was the word I was looking for. It's a spring porch in the back. Wow, I love that. And I didn't see it. Oh, was, but there's an apartment apparently over the garage. And, um, Oh, giant. And it was it's really cute. People that came, but I was with my son. It's 3422. Oh, sorry. Whoops, sorry. <laughs> That's a big move, too. Big lot. Almost 10,000. The pool is yeah. really pretty. 52 East Broad Oaks, a million six ninety five. Oh. Janet Giamalva. She's had this long time. Well, it was, but the guys didn't sell their house, so it's back on the market. They get an offer on their house, yeah. You need to find out what that is. Oh, it's at Sandy's house. On the north yeah. Just a nice location, nice walking. That's why they're just Can it be subdivided? 802 North 2nd Street in Bel Air, a million six ninety nine, Headley. This one's actually a realist, we just reduced the price. Oh, okay. The beautiful home, though. That's a great picture. Mm -hmm. <laughs> One oh seven three three Marsha 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 a million seven ninety nine Charlotte Lee. <laughs> Make sure y'all paying attention. 
Thirty-seven seventy-three Sunset Boulevard in Westview, a million seven ninety-nine Debbie Crow. Right on. How much was that? A million seven ninety-nine. Thirty-one eighty-four. Yeah, it looks good. Thirty-seven seventy-eight Childress in Westview. A million eight forty-nine Henley Carpus. One's also another uh, three less. We just reduce the price and rates. Okay. I like you're reducing the price. <laughs> 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 Hold on, let me see if there's any shoes there. I'll say, look at Marcos. Not there, Twenty-seven twenty-nine Alvin's in Westview, a million nine Debbie Crow. Twenty-seven Fifteen silver horn <coughs> Lake Forest of Kellywood, a yep. million nine. This is a, this is a relist, y'all. This is on over an acre in Katy, and it has absolutely everything. The house is over ten thousand square feet. I call that like the sports pavilion in the back. It's got a beautiful circular drive, gated drive, four car garage, tennis court, lighted tennis court. Plus beyond the pool, there's a giant play yard, so you can play soccer there as well, like over there. And then there's um, tennis court area. That's your two-story entry. Master is down. Two-story living room there. Opens to your dining room. There's a little window that looks into the, the wine room. Uh, master with sitting room down that opens out to the pool. That's the sitting room. Uh, master bath. There's three vanities, two in that photo. Um, and, that, and then that's the third one. The exercise room could be a, an additional gigantic closet downstairs. There's already a big closet, but that's another one. Your kitchen has island after island after island. Um, two dishwashers, two ovens, warming drawer, everything you can imagine. Opens to the family room and breakfast room. The breakfast room looks like it's a dining room, but it's a breakfast room. And this all opens out to this outdoor area, which is fabulous and big. This has that's a guest bedroom downstairs 
with the full bath and then another room downstairs which could be a, a craft room that's the media room upstairs and that opens into the game room with the billiard table and and then that that door there goes to a large balcony that runs across the back of the house <coughs> study upstairs uh, they call it the children's uh, TV room and then this bath connects the study and the kids TV room with a big walk-in steam shower separate shower and tub shower one of the kids rooms kids homework room this is over the four car garage so it's gigantic it's got this big room it's got a, a full bath and um, the storage in this house is phenomenal this is in the, the, the sports pavilion outside that serves to the tennis court side and the pool side. There's a pool bath out there, not a pool bath, a, a pound bath, pool bath, and a storage closet. Outside. Million nine, he paid two million four for it. And where are the putting greens? Yes, two, two, two putting greens, not one. Yeah, where yeah. where in Katie is it? It's called Lake Forest of Kellywood. It's right off of Friday. Oh, okay. Wow. Tennis course, school, and cutting range. Yeah, it's it's what it's else do you need? It's yeah. I mean, it's it's a it's like a resort. Yeah, and it is it's a man guarded access, so you can't get back in there to drive around. You wow. know, to check it out. Wow, we're just three Blaylock Pines Court, a million nine eighty five. Patty Garrison. So read this one too. You got some fabulous. One hundred nine one zero Bridgewood Street in Hunters Creek, two million two ninety nine Robert Bland. $2,490,000. Y'all, this is a new listing in Stablewood. It is a custom, traditional, uh, it has a New Orleans feeling. Um, master on the second floor with two guest bedrooms, and then it's got an apartment on the second level that uh, has access with a stairwell and an elevator. It has another elevator in the house. It's just a beautiful, traditional barnet, 12 foot ceilings down, 10 foot ceilings up. And um, just a one owner custom. And it just needs obviously some white paint. But it's really, really a beautiful house. So keep it in mind, my people are really motivated. They bought the one story that I had in Stablewood. <coughs> Kitchen or bathroom. I think that's cool. Yeah. Yeah. Just sell it to you, Marilyn. Bye. 
the mask on. It has his and her mask. It's in her bath, it's in her closets. All the guest rooms are really nice size. Mm -hmm. the guest rooms. Oh, wow. Beautiful bathrooms. All the bathrooms are big. That is the third floor. The third floor is 500 feet. Wow. Uh, and it's all storage. Wow. That's a good wrapping Yeah. It's a gorgeous house and it's on the boulevard in the middle. That's the <laughs> office and that's a full bath there. Uh, and he has his own elevator to go down to the garage. It's a great house, so mm -hmm. keep it in mind. These people spared no expense. They kept this house up. Yeah, no, it's in it's beautiful condition. These house. beautiful porches off the back of La Mancha's New Orleans. Mm -hmm. so keep it in mind. It's very easy to show. Very and the price? 2490. Oh, that's a good one. 6,200 feet in the, in the house, and then 550 feet. Yeah, look at that. Oh, they're snooping. <laughs> Snoop. <laughs> Okay, um, hang on one second. Drew and John, where's John? John Thomas, where are you? He's gone. Oh, he's gone. Okay, y'all come on up while we go over. Any more new listings? Yeah. New listing. I have a new listing coming in Caceres, three bedroom. Three and a half bath, thirty-two hundred square feet, seven ninety-nine. Caceres, wow. okay. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. I, I missed, I'm sure, my listing that came up, but it was 9326 Shady Lane Circle. I just want to tell everybody this is the dream buyer's house. It's over improved and underpriced. <laughs> okay. Yes, ma'am. I'm just saying 5729 B Logan is on the ravine. We still have ravine buyers that did not flood, it did not flood during Harvey, which is really unique, and you still have a view. So uh, okay. if you have ravine buyers that still want to be on the ravine, it's five minutes to downtown, five minutes to the Galleria. 1.15. Oh, hey, new listing, uh, Carol Sue? Um, Ina Perlman and I have just co-listed a gorgeous, gorgeous unit at the Royalton. Two bedrooms, two baths, 1721 square feet the owner is a decorator and it is scrumptious it's just gorgeous the views of downtown are wonderful from every room um has a wonderful balcony facing downtown and it's going to be listed at 769 and if one wanted to buy the furniture it would be 849. it's truly beautiful. what floor 13. okay jonathan uh, I've got two coming up. Uh, the first one is going to be in the Washington Corridor area, First Ward. It's a three-story townhome. Uh, it's really beautiful, rooftop deck, whatever. I'm going to list it about 415. It's on Crockett Street. And then the other one I'm super excited about, it's in Eastwood in my part of town. Uh, it is my first call that I've gotten from my farm. Yeah, uh, yeah, and uh, it's this adorable couple. They are 85 years old, Bob and David. And uh, Bob is a retired interior designer, and he has been in this house since 1957. Wow! wow. wow. It's 4,000 square feet on an 8,500 square foot lot, which is really unique for the area. It was originally built in the 1920s, but he's built some additions to it. It's a pretty unique house. He's got the whole property uh fenced in and the whole outdoor area like there's no grass inside the fence it's 100 percent decked and landscaped all around and designed for entertaining uh, i'm going to list at five hundred thousand dollars which is really cheap for a house that size it does need a little love he hasn't done any significant work to it since 1988 but, <laughs> but it's a very fascinating house with an interior designer that lives there oh and his partner David knew Martha Turner once upon a time <laughs> so he's very excited to have me represent him perfect 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 Jack so I've got that house at uh, the woods of Afton or the village of Afton woods back here over behind Ikea so this is a one-story 2250 square foot, three bedroom, two bath home. And this one, Curbio is finishing up the work this week. So I've had Curbio come in there. They've uh, completely redone the front landscape. 
They've completely repainted the entire inside of the house, trim, ceiling, walls. We're ripping out the carpet today, putting new carpet in. Be professionally cleaned on Thursday and Friday. We'll get it staged for coming up. So Village of Afton Woods right over here. It's gated, it's manned 24 hours, and it's a one story. How much? So it's going to be how much? about 500 to 525. We're looking at that. I want to see how it looks with the staging before. Okay. Okay. So I have this house that Robin just put up on the screen. This one's coming on market Thursday. It's um, 6,500 square feet on uh, 2400 block of Del Monte. It is like an old New England Cape Cod house you find um, in Tucket or something. Jingles on the outside, um, slate roof, coppers full of uh, antique light fixtures inside. Um, it's a great floor plan, lots of light. Mirador Builders. <laughs> Mirador Builders. Nice. I will say, Jennifer picks the most beautiful finishes. Beautiful finishes. Yeah. Those lights and her mirrors and yeah. things are yeah. gorgeous. It feels like an old house, though, but it's got open rooms and high ceilings. Um, yeah. It's got a lot of character. It's got some color in it. How much is Earth, this? How Earth much? 5.2. Okay. You want the other ones? And then, sure, yeah. Then we also have um, 2535 Inwood. It's on a half an acre. It's about 8,000 square feet. Um, just can't really get any photos yet, but it's a uh, limestone bubble house um, with a tile roof. It's beautiful inside. Um, she just knocked this one out of part, and that's 8.2. And we'll put that on hopefully on Monday, but both will be open on Tuesday. Okay. Perfect. Okay. Right. Okay. New listing? Uh, yeah, we have one at 8615 Merlin in Memorial Villages. It's a beautiful Mediterranean style home located on a quiet cul de sac. It's a 4,334 square feet on a 9,216 lot. It was built in 2009 and it's really just beautiful. Okay, how much was it? Uh, 1.345. 1.345. Yes, ma'am. New listing? Yes. Uh, 1600 post book at the Cosmopolitan. I'm sorry, what am I? 1600 post book at the Cosmopolitan. I'm still working on the pricing because it's a penthouse and when I went in, my jaw dropped. It was far exceeding. I mean, they had completely redone this in the last few years, so everything's new. So I, I need some help on pricing, but I'm thinking. 2.5 um, and it's okay. 33 Okay. Anybody else? What y'all think about that? You have a new listing? Yeah, it's a lease listing in River Oaks. It's 9,000. It's 3643. Okay. What y'all think about that fabulous breakfast? Yay. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. All right. Summer's here. Sure uh, our May was. Crazy. We were up about 30% from last May, so I can only imagine what the summer is going to bring. Uh, but I want to take this opportunity to thank you guys for all the opportunities you've provided over the years. This is our last meeting with us this year, and I didn't want to get away without thanking all of you for your patronage and the opportunities you've provided. Um, keep in mind, as we go through the summer, um, that we have the physician attorney loan. That goes up to 1.5 million, 100% financing, no mortgage insurance. That's, that's tough, tough to beat that. Yeah. And if they don't happen to be one of those particular professions, you can go up to 2 million on a anybody loan <coughs> for 10% down, no mortgage insurance, no escrow requirement. So we have we have some products that would help your clients that aren't necessarily available elsewhere. We also have the CRA loan. CRA loan is particularly relevant in the Spring Branch and Edo area because like, like your properties that you should have today. Uh, <laughs> it goes up to 484,000. Credit score down to 640. And it has, uh, it's 100% financing. So some low hanging fruit uh, if they're in those census tracts. It, it, Income doesn't matter. There are no census tracts. Andrea Fowler is our expert there. She does a bazillion of them. Uh, so I urge you, if you have somebody in that area, at least call her and check to 
to see if it will fall in, in that category. And if not, she has other options too. She's, she's actually an excellent uh, position lender as well. So once again, thank you, thank you, thank you for all the patronage and the opportunity you provided and look forward to seeing you next year. Great, thank you, thank you. Thank you. Um, Grant, you want to come on up? And while I introduce our new agent in the Woodlands who drove in this morning, where is she? Cindy. Cindy Allen, stand up. Cindy is very experienced in with Coa Banker and came to us. She was a referral from one of our agents up there. These are our best agents come from y'all. You work with these agents and you say, we need to have her. So welcome, Cindy. We're glad you're here. And thank you for driving in this morning. <laughs> Yes, I've got it. Okay. Grant Harpole is going to tell us, I can't tell you how important it is to know what's going on in your business. Um, what's come up? What are the issues now? Things like that. We've got to stay on top of it because trust me, the buyers and the sellers are staying on top of who they're coming after. So we want to know what's going on and how to protect ourselves and Keep everything right, right, Brandon? Yes. Right. Yeah, good. Right. Okay, thank you. Good morning. How are y'all? What was it? That was 100% <coughs> financing. financing for lawyers? No, 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 no. That's not what I see him. No. It's been a certain amount. Yes. Right. Okay. That's not what I want you to see. Uh, <coughs> um, Hold on one second. My, I'm sorry. Okay, I'll just talk for a moment. Technical difference. Hey, let me say this, just first of all. Thank you all for being here. You know, I. I uh, <laughs> In this era we're in, where, where it seems like realtors, your industry is kind of getting beat up a little bit. And, um, you know, and people seem to think you don't do a whole lot. So I know, of course, I know it's false. And then I, I come here and I see this meeting and I see people in attendance and caring about the property that's going to be listed or is listed. And you have people talking about listed properties, you have people listing the new listed properties. I mean, this. It's just, you're in the trenches and you're actually doing things and things are going on. And so I know that it's just reaffirmation of what I already knew. And it's just something that I wish the public had a better understanding about what all you do besides just collect a commission, which is kind of what's in your mind. And so, so uh, thank you all for being here because I think it's important and it's, it's, just, it's just one leg of the many things you do for your clients and for the industry. So... Uh, with that said, let me um, let me get started. So I, I, you know, the good news is, is that you know, so lawsuits. I mean, so I'm a lawyer, and so I've, I've defended a lot of brokers and agents over the years, and still do. And I've actually tried cases where you have won, and uh, and so you know, lawsuits are probably not as prevalent as they used to be because you're more sophisticated, you're more educated. And, and uh, you have more knowledge of what's going on than probably uh, back in yesteryear. So that's a good thing. So that's kind of part of what I'm here to kind of help keep that process going. And I guess probably the, the thing, one of the, the one of the big things I see, and I'll just click to the um, seller's disclosure notes. I mean, that's still that's still a um, an issue that uh, I still. Still see come up, and, and this is a so this is one of them. You know, it's it's when the question asked about you know certain defects in the property or certain issues with the property. It's not you don't have to have personal knowledge, or the seller does not have the personal knowledge. That's not what the question asks. The question asks, are you aware? So awareness is not the same is is a lesser standard, if you will, than knowledge. And so if you're aware, if the seller's aware, that's what we're talking about. The seller's aware of it, whether they saw it or whether their neighbor told them about it. They're aware of it, and, and it should be should be disclosed. And so that's, you know, it's it's funny these the, some of these seller disclosure issues come up from the the neighbor issue. You know, where the neighbor said, yeah. I mean, seriously, I mean, yeah. it's the pesky neighbor is dangerous to the to to uh, certain transactions because the neighbor says, well, I told them, and da 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 da. Anyway, so. Awareness is a, is a lower standard of knowledge. It's not personal knowledge. And so if the seller's aware of it, if they ask you, I was not there and I didn't see it, but I'm aware of what happened, then you gotta put it down. Okay, you gotta put it down. Um, the next one on the on the uh, <coughs> on the question about flooding, it says on into the structures, onto the property. And I think 
especially in light of Harvey, and even the Memorial Day and Tax Day floods, sometimes this question gets overlooked. People are thinking, you know, did it come into my house or did it come into the structure? And they and they don't really, you know, I think equally important is did it come onto the property? Did it come up to the porch? Did it come up halfway into the yard? Did it not come up at all? And so onto the property is is a is a is a one that you can't neglect or that the seller can't neglect. And so it's an important question to answer. And if there is you know, there is exposure there if, if if somewhere down the road the house floods and then they find out well the property previously the, the water previously come up onto the property, maybe not flooded the house that came up onto the property. So that's something to also be that's kind of one that kind of is kind of a, a, a gotcha. And so be careful always the seller has a struggles with that question that's still an important question and it's not necessarily like i said into the house but it's on the property um next one so i i um yes if you have questions please stop me along the way uh onto the property would there be a home in houston that didn't have water onto the property during our yeah, yeah, sure. Oh, yeah. 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 But there'd be there's a lot that did get it onto the property, and that's my point. So not in the house, but not right. on, yeah, but that's a good point you made. There's a lot that did not. There's a lot, a lot that did. And so you know, that's uh that's something to be conscious of. Um well, then you get into the detail of was it there longer than twenty four hours? Doesn't matter. Okay. So doesn't matter. If it comes up onto the property and, and leaves you know, that's it. So, yes. What about for a ditch? Is that onto the property? Well, if the ditch is, <laughs> ditch is city property. I don't know. Yeah, is the ditch on the property? Well, not in the building. Meaning, if the water comes out of the ditch or out of the street or, or wherever it may come up onto the property, <laughs> then that's that's something that has to be destroyed. If the ditch goes like this, where do you know where you're lying where the property? Is? Well, if the property, if, if the ditch is on the property. And the water comes out out of this ditch up into the property. I still think, yes. I think it's, yeah. you got to disclose it. Yeah, I mean, if, if the if the um, I'm just trying to picture a ditch that's considered on the property. <coughs> Well, I, have a, um, I have a ditch in front of my house. Yeah, yeah but it's, it's probably a, <laughs> right. I don't know if that's your ditch. It's probably owned by the city. But let's say it is your ditch. If the water comes out of the ditch, whether it's yours or the city's or whoever's, and comes up out of what would be the normal, you know, whether it be a street, a ditch, or whatever, the normal thoroughfare for the water, if it comes out of that under your property, disclose that. And you know, and, and if, if I'm a buyer's agent, I might would ask that question anyway, you know, just to reconfirm. And we'll talk about that in a little bit. Um, I saw this, you know, this is another one. See, and I saw some, and I'm not going to pick on anybody in the room, but I saw some listings here. And you put in the general comments, and I'm talking about when I, what I read on HR.com. You say, some have said, uh, never flooded, or house did not flood in Harvey, or, or words to that effect. And so, my point here is if, if, I, if I'm going to make comments about a property, whether out of my mouth or on the internet or on the general comments that you see on HR.com or on wherever it might be, whatever comes out of your MLS input, uh, I would reference the self disclosure notice. I would not say anything more than what's in the self disclosure notice. Because if you say the house never flooded, those are, and that's all. That's all. That's that's all you say. You don't put a reference to it. Then, and if that ends up not being true, even if you didn't know, I mean, you and you something the seller told you, then you're still you're you're you're, 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 you're you know you're on the hook. You're on the hook. Thank Can you. we say per seller never flooded? I would say per seller's that's per seller's disclosure notice. Because okay. here, here's why I say that. Because the seller should be not telling you anything more than what's in the seller disclosure right. notice. Sure. So if they're telling you something that's not in the seller disclosure notice or giving you expanded detail of something that's not, then, <laughs> then that means it didn't get in the seller disclosure notice. And so your your verbiage or your your uh, providing of information to the public should be nothing more than what you were provided. Specifically, I would align it to the seller disclosure notice. And so when you say whether whether you verbally say it or you say it in your comments about a property, 
uh, MLS input, wherever it might be. And I saw, and I did see an example of, of, a, of one of your agents that had it listed this way. It, it said, did not flood during Harvey per seller disclosure notice. Oh, sure. yeah. You know, or ne if you want to say never flooded, I mean, I, that always is <laughs> scary to me, but if, if the seller put in the seller disclosure notice it never flooded, then you can, okay, it never flooded per seller disclosure notice. So what I'm saying is tie your language to what the seller has said in the seller disclosure notice, because that provides you cover. If you say something that's not in the seller disclosure notice, I can promise you the seller's going to say, well, I don't know that I ever really told you that. And oh, by the way, it's not in the disclosure notice. Where did you get that? I didn't tell you that. You know, they're going to turn it back on the seller. Um, does that make sense to everybody? Yes. Okay. Yes. Can you say it did not flood even if it got water in the garage? Can you say the house didn't no. flood? No. 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 Well, no. it is. The garage is and, and the other point is, you know, <laughs> Harvey was the, the big one, right? But Harvey was not the only one. I mean, we had Memorial Day, we had Tax Day, we had all the way back to Allison. If the homeowner's been in the property that long or has knowledge or awareness that far back. So, this, the, the, you know, don't put on blinders just on what they know about Harvey. This, this, this covers anything that they're aware of in the past. And to the extent that you're aware of it, just by having knowledge of this particular property for whatever reason, that's something that has to be discussed also with the seller if it's not in the disclosure statement. Um, I have a question. Yes. If we have a seller who refuses to fill out the seller's disclosure notice correctly and puts, it never flooded, it right. never flooded, and keeps checking no, 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 when right. we know for a fact it did. And you have a listing issue. So don't take the listing. No, we're not taking the listing. I mean, yeah. I mean, that's, I mean, on something that fundamental, uh, I would not take the listing. Okay. Because if you know that it flooded or or you have some knowledge that is different, some awareness that's different than what the seller is willing to disclose. Right. Especially if you know that the seller knows that. It would take it's just not worth it, you know. It's just it's, it's there are sellers out there that think, well, I only got about a half an inch. Well, I, yeah, I, I think I think we tell them, come on. Yeah, I think that's where they they you know they should Trust your judgment on that. Your judgment, your advice on that should be. It has to be disclosed. It's not, you know. It's, it, it, you know. I think y'all know this, but more information, sure. it's better. The, it, it helps the property sell. I, I believe it, even the worst information. You know, be transparent, and and that ultimately is wins wins out over trying to hide something. Right. Um, so you know. Um, so this is, this is, I have a little follow up on this. Um, I think as a listing agent and certainly as a buyer agent, if there's something that you see in the seller disclosure notice that is not complete, maybe they miss <laughs> as simple as miss, missing a box or checking something that's not accurate or checking something that does, just doesn't make sense. Maybe it's in conflict with something else in the seller disclosure notice. It needs to be raised. And I have an example I'm gonna go to relative to uh, put y'all in a buyer situation to see if you think. But before I go there, I have this, this next slide. Let me show you this real quick. Um, and I know you can't read it, but the, the uh, you can read parts of it. The, the, I'm trying to make an impact here. So the seller disclosure notice is changing. Starting, the, there's a bill right now on the governor's desk that's going to change it. And so, should, if he signs it, then he should. September 1, there's written, so the seller disclosure notice is now five pages, the TAR form. Probably going to go to six pages because there's going to be a full page now. You're not just going to have those two questions anymore about flooding. It's going to now be a full page, and there's going to be, it's going to wow. talk about 500-year floodplain, 100-year floodplain, a bunch of definitions. I mean, there's it's going to be it's a it's a page in the top. Whether you got FEMA money, I mean, so so this is this is coming. Uh, uh, Kind of neat, <laughs> uh, this is coming, and so uh, get ready for it. Uh, I don't know that anybody. I mean, it just happened, and uh, and the there was a big battle that was there were there was going to be two disclosure notices. The, the standard one that we have now, 
and then there were going to, there was going to be a flood disclosure notice. And and to, to their credit, TAR fought the bill and had it changed to where it just be combined into one notice instead of having you having to carry two notices. And Will this happen so this year? You can send that yeah. it'll, it'll come into effect by September 1, so it's going to happen pretty quick. It should come. I mean, so it's better for I don't. Typical bills that are passed in this let in this session become effective September one. That's typical. I don't know that this is going to be any different. So, so be, be looking for that. I guess. So is that going to require the agents to know whether the property they're listing is in the hundred year flood plan, the five hundred? Uh, good questions. I don't. I don't. Once again, it gets back to unless you have some knowledge i don't think it's on you to fill out that information that information Sorry. still is on the seller yeah i mean you know it's going to be tough on the seller because the seller they won't, they won't know and the only way to really know is to get a survey or an elevation certificate elevation. you know and so the, the survey in most surveys old surveys don't have the final year they have the one year and so uh hopefully the question will be phrased where it's a you know uh, if you don't know you can answer it that way but i Yet to be seen, and so I'm sure TAR is going to redo their form and uh, just be, be be aware that this is this is coming, and it's, and it's because of Harvey, and uh, and because of addicts also. There's a lot of stuff yeah. related to the to building, and if you're in a pool or whatever, you know all those issues related to addicts reservoir. Will we be required to any listings we have to update? I would think that I I don't think you're required, but I think it'd be a good idea. Repeat the question. Yeah. You're Repeat the question. Yeah. So, if if you already had a listing that you came up in in July or August, okay, and then now the new law comes in and you have the old disclosure statement, you're probably grandfathered. But as a as a as a good, yeah, as, as a good practice, now that you know that's in place, you should probably redo your your seller disclosure notice. I remember this when um, you know I remember this when um, over the years. This question has come up before when the seller disclosure notice has been updated, and that's been the, I think that's been the general advice and the good advice is to go ahead and update yours if you, even though you were grandfathered under it, to go ahead and get get current with what's out there, and so it's just it just removes any issues about why if something does come up, why did why didn't you do it? I, you know, I just you know so yes. So there's a uh, second seller disclosure. I want to use the shorter one. And Right. The, the track form, form. Track yes. Form. Do we have any ability when uh, we're showing a property and it has, sometimes it's a uh, licensed investor, licensed flipper that uses that shorter form. Can we require them to, to complete this form? You, you, uh, you can ask, but as a buyer's agent, maybe you should ask. And probably you know, That's probably a good idea, but you can't require it. It's still a listing side, and I rarely, and maybe all the I I rarely see the use, maybe more in the, for lack of a better word, in the country uh, versus in the city, that trek form. Because that trek form is the bare minimum, you know. Exactly. Right. 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 And so you can ask if you can get it, great. But there's, there is no obligation. So, yes. Um, a lot of times I'll tell my buyers, well, go ahead and check with the insurance company. They, they, you know, since they're going to be insuring the house, right. would, wouldn't insurance companies know? No, no. About the insurance that? company would tell you or tell your buyer you need to get an elevation certificate, and so, and that only comes through a surveyor. So they don't have. So I thought the insurance companies would have areas. I mean, you can you can go to to Harris County Flood Control and you can look at the FEMA maps and all that stuff, and you can you can make a somewhat educated guess, but it's still you're you're guessing. To some degrees, the best. And here's what, and I'll bring this up later. The, what's probably the, what what will the survey will give to you is show it exactly where it cuts across the property. Whereas the even if you looked on the internet and tried to, okay, I can see it. You don't know where because some of it, the 100 here is the 500 is here on some properties, or it just cuts the very corner of it. So, you know, and the survey will show you that. And going to the map, the internet active map doesn't look, may show you that it's in the area or covers the property, but I won't show you exactly where. So is Texas going to update the survey requirements to add that to the new surveys in conjunction with this? Well, uh, you know, that's a good question because typically it's not on there, the 500 a year, unless you, unless you ask. 
Yeah. They're going to start making this a mandatory. They, they, you would think they would, or that even if you know, even they, even if they, they being the government, even you would think the market, you, you would dictate that. You know that that needs to be done for the benefit of your client, ultimately their client too. Yes. On that, <clears throat> on that form, is there a yes, no, and unknown? That's what I, I I don't know that we're going to wait and see on that because that's I, I don't I think there is not and so I'm waiting to see how TAR deals with that because I don't because because uh, that would be that would be beneficial or helpful but it also I think the argument against it is just gives the yeah it gives the seller a way to slip out. However, you're going to have work. to have proof to have a yes or a no. Yeah. With a survey yeah. or an uh, with an elevation certificate. So it's going to require that for you to be able to answer that. Act. That's right. Yeah, so, that's yeah. correct. I would not doubt it would have an unknown. Um, go back here. So, hang on. Marilyn, will that I'll tell you right here. Because sellers to get a survey? I can read it a little better. So here's, here's what the model oh, looks like. Yeah. It says, are you seller or aware of any of the following conditions? Right? Yes, if you're aware. Check wholly or partly has applicable, so there's subparts. Write no if you're not aware. So you can, so it's asking your awareness, and if you're not aware, you can answer no. If you are aware, you answer yes. So I think there is, I think there, it, it maybe won't, it doesn't sound like it will be as punitive or maybe as, as uh, mind boggling on the sellers as it, as it could be. So that, that, that's a, that's like an initial draft. That's not the final, but that, that sounds like it, it at least is workable. Um, so look at this. Let me go back to this. So just pretend pretend on, um, this is kind of just a, it's a curiosity. Pretend that everything else in this section, section three, which is kind of the important section, or one of the most important sections. And everything else to check no, so there was an N and everything else. I didn't do all that and just pretend everything else is in and just look at the ones that I highlighted and see if you get that if you get that disclosure statement in, in relation to a property you as a buyer's agent let's say you read that with your client does it raise any issues to you as a buyer's agent yes what 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 is it well flood insurance coverage number one previous flooding Onto the property, not on the structure, but on, yeah, on the structure, and then on the property. Where did it penetrate? Okay, so well, your question. So I left that out on the next page. We have the right. comments. I didn't put that, but it says on the next. Let's just say on the next page it says flood insurance in place, mm -hmm. and water came into property. Well, that's infrastructure. Well, that's well, no, no, no. It's it's the comments. So the comment not is. Flood insurance in place, water came into property. In the property. Into the property sounds to me like See, it's a into structure. Into sounds to me like a structure. Yes. Onto sounds like land. I agree. But okay, so I, I I agree. So what what would you do as if you're if you're hit with this? Call for an explanation. Yeah, yeah call for an explanation. So wouldn't right we do side. that? I mean yes, that, yes. because it seems to be saying what you might think it says, but you're not sure because it talks about water penetration, but it says no about water into structures or flooding into structures. But then it says uh, on two property, but then in the comments it says into property. So what do you do as a buyer's agent when you see this? I would ask. You need an explanation. You need, a, you need a, something in writing. Yes. Something to clarify. Yeah. And you maybe you asked the question specifically. Did the water come did the yeah. what did the water flood, whatever have you want to phrase it, come into the house? And when? That would be the other thing. I'd like to know was it was it was it Harvey? Was it Memorial Day? Was it tax day? Was it July fourth? Allison. You know, was it Allison? Yeah. Did last rain last July fourth? I mean that was was it this a month ago in Fort Bend County? I don't know. So so I think this so my reason in bringing this up is you know, especially in the in the in the area, and nowadays when buyers agents seem to be kind of being punched around a little bit, I mean, this is something you see this information. This uh, should raise a red flag to you as a buyers agent to ask more questions in writing and get a response in writing, so that you can then show your client. 
Does that make sense? Am I? Yeah. Okay. Yes. No. Yes. Um, how much time do I have? Long as you need. I don't mean, I don't need to. You know, some of this stuff. Let me see. What else I got? All right, this is switching gears a little bit. Totally. Load it all up here. Um, so I just saw, as I was sitting here this morning, I just saw another lawsuit following this, not against a, a broker, but just in general. Uh, photography, photographers have really gotten rude. I don't know, what is the word? Not rude. Aggressive. Um, aggressive. aggressive, thank you. In, 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 in defending or protecting or pursuing those who might use their photograph without their permission or beyond what permission they gave. So this applies to y'all to some degree. I mean, I don't know. I don't know if everybody has their own photographer, or there's a there's a published photographer that that, that the company uses, or, or what. But the, the bottom line is, uh, is that I'm just going to fill it up all the way here. Um, is that if you're going to if you hire somebody to take photographs of a property, you should get it in writing, and you should have the agreement giving you all the rights to use that photograph, even beyond the listing. A, 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 a right that can't be taken away. So that's important because you then, when you upload that information to the MLS, you're representing to the MLS and the real MLS that you have the right to, but the MLS now has the right to use that for photograph. You know, for HR.com, for wherever it goes in the public. You're now representing to the MLS that you have all the rights to use this photograph. And those rights have to start with your agreement with the photographer. Now, HAR has a standard agreement that you can use with your photographer that gives you all the rights and gives you what the MLS needs in order to use a photograph. And also, uh, you, you can enter that agreement directly with your photographer, or you can have your photographer enter an agreement directly with, with uh, HRIS, with the MLS cover it that way. Either way, the point of the matter is you don't want to get, say, after the listing is over and the photograph's still out there for whatever reason, or you may want to use a photograph in some of your marketing or whatever it may be, you don't want to get a demand or a lawsuit or something for improper use of the photograph. You don't want HR.com or anybody else also to get a demand or a lawsuit about improper use of the photograph if you did not have the right for them to use it to begin with. And it's a, it's a, it's kind of a, a black hole of, of damage. The damage that they seek to claim from people misusing a photograph can be A to Z. It can be a hundred dollars to a hundred thousand dollars. I mean, it's, it's, there's no rhyme or reason to how they calculate the damages. It's just almost discretionary. And so it's very important that from the, from the front end that you obtain the rights you need and the rights the MLS needs to pretty much use that photograph internally and unlimited. You know, you don't have to own it. Just getting a license to use it and you're granting that and you have to get getting a license to to allow somebody else to use it. So your your rights are to use it yourself and also allow somebody else to use it at being the MLS. And so uh, I noticed that on your website, y'all do this DMCA notice is important and I think I, I checked your website and I checked some individual websites and y'all do have the DMCA notice, which which is essentially kind of a, a stiff arm that if somebody claims that you have a photograph on your website that was that is theirs and you didn't that they didn't give you a right to use it, you can or, or you can uh, stand on this DMCA notice, which is on your website, which should be on everybody's website that tells that allows you the chance to pull the photograph down not be held responsible for improper use of the photograph. So this would apply to photographs you may have or photographs you get from a third party. It doesn't really matter. If you have a website, and I think most of you have it this way, if you have a website that um, has photographs on it or any sort of intellectual property on it, if you have this DMCA notice, Digital Millennium Copyright Act, it's a federal thing, that gives you a safe harbor to say, hey, if I have that on my website, just give me notice, a chance to pull it down, and they and they have to do that, and then there is no liability, there is no responsibility, and so uh, so it's a it's an absolute must. And like I said, I think I checked some of your individual websites on some of you, and I, and I checked the 
part of the current website. It's there, so that's that's good. It didn't used to be there, but it's there now, so that's good. Um, moving on to another subject. Uh, Did you get the language when you say others? They say so. If you go right now, how do we pull it? Go to go to Martha Turner's website right now. And look down at the bottom at the footer, at the very bottom of the, of the home page, you'll see DMCA notice. And so, so it's a process that, uh, well, A, you have to have a notice on your website. And then if you click on that notice, it tells, tells the person who thinks you're offending or violating the use of the photograph on what to do. And then you have to register or have somebody, a name registered in the copyright office in Washington for them to contact. It's a very simple process, though. And if you have any issues on it, I, I can walk you through it. Does it apply to social media, like Instagram accounts? Things like it would that? apply. It, well, yes, if you're posting other photographs, yes. And so I would have that in your. But on Instagram, there is no. You know, that's the issue with Instagram. That's, that's the issue with Instagram. Yeah, there is no place to put all that, right? Right. That's so an on Facebook, you can. You can put it back on your on your on your. Uh, well, and yeah, you, bio page. Yeah, if you post from Sotheby's Homes yeah. or the property website or the agent website, and the disclaimer, it's originating from there, so then the disclaimer is there. So that's one of the important reasons why to post from those our websites versus the third parties. Just FYI. Yeah, if it links back to something, that would that would be helpful. So yeah. Um, so uh, yes. So we get photographs. We, we have one with TK. The majority of us have TK. I think you don't have one with TK. If you don't, yeah. and if you don't use TK, then right. there's an HR form that you can use for your own particular photograph. It's, uh, I'll give you the form number. Hang on. That's why she was here talking about the limited and the unlimited license agreement. So it depends on what kind of agreement you want to have with them. Right, it's H HAR 302 is the form. HAR 302. If you don't, if, if you know, if you're not using TK, or if your photographer doesn't have an agreement with MLS currently, which they can do, it just really makes it simple. Um, let's see. And there it is, right there. Like it has, you can't, you can't read it, but there is a form. I didn't make it up. Um, all right. So this is showing us up on the slide. I man. So this is. Uh, so this is a, so this is an interesting thing, yeah. What'd you say? Oh my God! I said, oh my, this is what I thought. So, uh, just Sitting before on. I unload all of this, I mean, and this, you know, is it overkill? Maybe, maybe not. Is it? Anyway, here we go. So they passed an ordinance last year, uh, or actually, became they passed it a year ago and became effective in September of last year. And if you build or remodel, significant remodel, in the 100 year or 500 year, it doesn't matter. It used to be the old rule was 100 year. Now it's, you do either build, new build, or significant or material remodel in the 100 or 500 year, your finished floor has to be two feet above the 500 year floodplain. And so, and, and that would be on a new construction. There's some other hoops you got to meet if you're doing a significant remodel. And I can't even get into that here because it really takes a, a reading of the, of the ordinance to understand it. And I'm not going to delve into that here. But the point of all of this is, and that's kind of what this, this um, slide is. Let me just load it up. And that's where I'm getting is down at the bottom. Is that if your client, so this is really for buyers agents, if your client is <coughs> looking at houses in, a, in an old neighborhood or in a neighborhood that had flooding in the past, and they may be tearing it down, or maybe they're thinking they'll live there for a while and tear it down in five years, I have a lawsuit right now on this very issue, um, then, you know. Perhaps they should be aware of, and this is a way to make them aware of, that if they do something like that down the road or soon after they purchase it, there is 
these new regulations, A, are going to affect the cost of them building because they got to go higher up. If they're in the 500 year floodplain or in the 100, it doesn't matter. And it's going to, and it's going to have a different look, you know? So, I mean, if you're two feet above 500 year floodplain, you could, some areas, you could, I could be up here. And, you know, and uh, that's inside the loop, that's outside the loop, that's West Houston, that, that, that really affects all over. And so uh, there's a form that uh, we've come up with also at HAR, um, HAR 303. I can't read it, but it does exist. But it's uh, HAR 303. And so it's really a form that's, that tells your buyer, hey, you need to be aware of this. Now, it doesn't. It doesn't get so detailed to tell them everything about the ordinance because that would be nobody would read it or understand it and it maybe put too much burden on you. But it just alerts them to that fact that if they have an idea of tearing down this house now or in the future, uh, they need to be aware that there are new regulations in place that are going to affect the height of the house. And so that's going to affect the cost and that's going to affect. The aesthetics or how you know do they want to be that high up i don't i don't know maybe they don't care but at least uh, put them on notice so they can decide for themselves hey no way um, let's 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 move further north or wherever wherever they're looking or fine thanks for telling me i'll i'll check into that does that make sense um, um, i mean are you all aware of this this yeah so i mean it's uh yes they were aware of it so it's, I mean, it's, it's a, it's just kind of, I mean, but I, I must say it'd be okay if you said no, because it's just, it's, it's something that wasn't, wasn't really uh, broadcasted too much. And now that flooding and Harvey is kind of in the rearview mirror a little bit, this is still, there's still a lot of inventory out there of houses in these areas where people are considering buying and building and they need to know that it's, you know, the old rule of a hundred year floodplain now change to 500 year and it gets back to what we were talking about earlier the survey now comes into play again you know comes into play again on this issue on the buyer side now we had it on the seller side before and now it's on the buyer side and survey is, is is a critical document on both sides so uh and you know and it's and this is all and i i didn't this is not in the presentation but uh, i always Suggest that in the contract you get a new survey. Don't ever rely on an old survey, especially now. That's nowadays. our company policy. Okay, good. Because we've, we've had that case before, too. Um, let's see, what else we got? Oh, this is an old one, but I still like hitting it just for the heck of it. Um, So yes, you can form a contract by email, and I would suggest you can you can, you can uh, do it also by text. You can create a contract by email and by text. I haven't actually seen a text one yet, but I have seen uh, email contracts. And this is a there's a case. Uh, so the key term, I mean, it, it, I mean, it's just basic stuff. It's just almost common sense. You have price, terms, and closing. You got a deal. And so here's a case. Let me show you an email that created the contract. It's all it took. It's just what was highlighted. And, um, and so um, here they thought they were creating a right of first refusal. And instead they created an option contract at a certain price. And, uh, and it was enforceable. This is actually a reported case. One of them in the Court of Appeals and got affirmed. It was all done through email. And so I guess uh, always, always be cautious to, in using the word agree or, you know, I, I like words consider, we'll, we'll, we'll take under advisement, we'll consider, you know, making all, I mean, stuff that doesn't seem so binding as the term agreement or, uh, you know, so just, uh, I, and I, I know that's a broad sweep because, but it's hard to dig into each other's detail, but just, just be conscious of the fact of when you're when you have an email that maybe has some terms in it that seem to be suggesting we got some pretty 
it's a pretty detailed conversation we're having here, so I don't want to bind my client to this uh, unnecessarily. So it's still all, all for consideration. I'll let my client know about this and get back to you. I mean, it's not, it's not like, oh, that looks great. We'll agree to that. Thanks. You know, I mean, that's, that's, uh, that's what you got to be careful of. So had they put that language, as you said, and then uh, right after it goes, I'll get with my client and get back to you, would that have been an out, or that just the word agree is done? I think agree that it would have done it, or at least, or at least uh, still would have made the argument. Okay. Yeah. Did you say consider? Well, consider, yeah. Okay. Sometimes we, we see things, you know, okay, you have a deal? Yeah. Or yeah, we have time? a deal, yeah. I did. The, the list of the, the buyers, they, whoever it says, do we have a deal? Yes, we have a deal. No. Or you got it. I you saw know, it and it doesn't, you may say, well, in this email, the deal's not really laid out, but I can go back if I have four other previous emails that show the deal, and I have the fifth email that makes the deal, I can, you know, here I just needed one email, but I can still put together five emails and maybe throw in a text and make a deal. So it, it's an extreme situation, but it happened. I mean, this was a, this was a, this, this involved the agent, and the agent kind of just got a little bit up over his head in this particular transaction on the terms he was using. Isn't the word will right before agree also yeah. important? Because yeah. if you would have said may agree to it, it's at least a little at bit more. At least a little bit more wiggle room, sure. Yeah. 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 You couldn't do like a disclaimer saying, you like can't without of intent saying, yeah, you know, I mean, nothing, and unless it is in writing. Well, that's why we suggest using the seller's invitation. And you can put, put that disclaimer at the bottom of your email. I, I, I mean, we all do it to some degree, or some of us do it. I still say that if, if, if you, you know, actual language trumps boilerplate language. So even though you may have that boilerplate language at the bottom, if you actually come up with something, I, I, I think I would argue or could argue that, hey, you, yeah, you, uh, you blot it out your, your disclaimer with this particular language. So if this was put on the form, the invitation to present an offer, uh, without that first part, I was able to confirm just the, the bullet points, you would be safe. Yeah, okay. yeah. Okay, one more big item. Let me see, okay, I mean, like I said, I don't, is wire fraud still an issue? I can, that. I mean, it's still out there, you know, but I don't know. Nobody, I mean, there for a while it was Panic City. I was getting a call every day, you know, and it seemed like uh, maybe it's gone. I mean, this was uh, real quickly. Um, some of this, I mean, I know there's been an MLS rule change on this. Uh, I guess the most important thing I got out of this was there, and I spoke to an FBI agent about this at the very bottom. There's literally he told me there's literally people in Washington sitting at this website waiting for somebody to, to, provide note, to provide notice to them of a wire fraud situation so that they can actually maybe catch it or stop okay. it. But yeah, before it actually finds. So then, so this way, so if you're in this situation, you should immediately go to the website and report it to the FBI because this guy led me to think that there's literally a guy sitting there just waiting to like, you know, and, and kind of stop the Federal Reserve, from, I don't know, from funding it in some degree. So, uh, so something to something to be conscious of. Um, last thing, last thing, your old buddies at track are still around, and so um, uh, just I'm going to blow through this real quick. Some of this is old stuff or maybe new stuff. Um, um, you know, I remember the days you get to closing or get close to closing and we needed the form to kind of patch up an issue in the transaction and somebody came with the form and boom, we're off and running. And so Trek kind of uh, has tried to deal with that with, um, you know, if, if you're going to use a form to fill, a, fill in a gap in a transaction, you know, it has to have certain things and that's what I say here. Uh, if it's coming from a third party, which in your case it should, and if it does come from a third party, whether it be a lawyer or, or an association or whatever, it has to have certain language on it. And I think, you know, I think most of most are doing this. If, if they're not, just be lyric. And this is all. This is only to avoid getting a truck complaint or a truck claim or a truck violation. 
make sure if you use a, a, a form that is not a promulgated form that it has and it comes from a lawyer or a title company or you know, an association that it has just and the point of this is to inform the consumer of what they're signing. So who's who's preparing this and for what reason? Um, uh, you know, we we uh, we, we know that on the, on the sale or lease of property, we've got to use a truck form unless the, unless the form is prepared by the property owner or lawyer. Um, now let's see. Um, there's one other thing here. That, this is something to just kind of a little gotcha. Maybe this is old stuff. What I box there. If you're gonna add if you're gonna add to a contract or strike down a contract, truck says you must have something in writing from your principal and telling you that this has to be is to be done that way. So if you you're striking out something or adding um, certain text, you need something in writing from the client, and it's probably a good practice anyway. That authorized you to do that or told you to do that. So, you know, an email or something saying, you know, scratch out, you know, six months, make it 12, whatever, I, whatever it might be, whatever or whatever you might add. If it's, if it, and, I, and, I, and I would say, certainly if it's material to the transaction that you have something to write from the client. And that's, that's a track, that's a track rule. And that's probably not a bad practice anyway, just in case it ever comes back. Are we covered if it's in the principle themselves, or do the contract? So yes. You know, my you know my thought on this is is it should not have been a track issue because if the if the party signed the contract and that changes in the contract, that's an acknowledgement. Right. I mean that's why I argue two tracks that it's if they sign the contract and they initial the pages, that should be enough as an acknowledgement of, of right. them understanding the change in the terms. Well according to the track that just wouldn't be enough. So so but just, they initial the, the strike through? According to the track, that's not good enough. That's you know, not good enough. So so have some yeah, have, yeah, have some instruction in writing from the client that, uh, that uh, authorized that change. Uh, I haven't seen a complaint on this. This is somewhat new uh, because, like I said, from a practical standpoint, if the contract was signed or initial, that should be enough. The track seems to think not. Um, Good news is you can still fill in a blank and be okay with that. Don't need an email on that. Um, so uh, I think that was it. Um, of course, you can't pay the lawyer. And that's a lot of times I get calls from an agent, and uh, and always it's kind of the end of the conversation is ultimately the principal needs the buyer, the seller needs to get their own lawyer and talk it out, and not not talk it out through me, through you, to them. So. Thank you, too. All right. Perfect. Thank you. Thank you. Wasn't that informative? Yeah. All right. Thank you. Hey, keep up the good work. I, I meant what I said this morning about being here, being part of this. I mean, you know, it's it's good to, it's you know, it's it, it, this is a, an important job to have. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Perfect. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And if you have not been, if you're relatively new to our company, I'll excuse you for not knowing about chapter 19 that was changed last year. Yes. Everyone else in here knew about it. <laughs> That's right. Um, okay, one more thing. We have River Oaks right after this meeting. And then right after River Oaks, we have the next gym meeting. So if you guys are coming to the next gym, please come over and let us know. We have lunch and MCE that's going to be provided. So we're just trying to get a heads up. And then also next Thursday, not this Thursday, but the following Thursday, we're going to roll back out what we call the Agent Lead Business Development Program. So that's the three weeks that we have planned that really is working um, together with you, me teaming up with you all on some of the contacts that you may have you think could be a stream of business back to you, maybe through uh, a hospital contact, maybe through an HR director, a recruiter, somebody with something fancy title that's working on hiring people in Houston, because um, I know you guys have amazing contacts. So this is me working together with you. Um, hopefully there's not a referral fee attached to any of this business, but really just kind of a partnership of us going after some leads together. So we have to get it next Thursday. That's right. Perfect. Y'all have a terrific, terrific day. 
If you're here for River Oaks, stay right here. We're going to start immediately. <laughs> Have a great day, y'all. Bye. Bye, everybody. <laughs> Hey, uh, John Ale. John Ale, can you come here? I still don't know where they all break off. Here in the 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 Here in